Greetings, everyone. Well, we want to welcome you to this year's edition of the Chess Educator of the Year Award Ceremony. It's hard to believe that this began back in 2004 with Susan Polgar. Uh, we didn't realize how many years this would be going on at this point. So we're very happy to continue, particularly with our honoree tonight, uh, Carol Vendell. And I'm Jim Stallings. I'm the director of the chess program. I think most of you know me already. Uh, I would like to give a couple of housekeeping reminders. At the very end, uh, we're going to have a quick survey that pops up. It just take you a second to answer the questions. So if you'd like to do that, we'd appreciate it. Also, if you have questions during the presentation, please write them in the chat line, and then we'll give them to our Carol at that point in time. All right. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Carrie Tate. She is the director of the Student Access Accessibility Program, and she will introduce Carol. Hello, Carrie. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I am Carrie Tate and the director of student accessibility at UT Dallas. As many of you know, may not know, UTD has one of the largest populations of self-disclosed students who are on the spectrum attending the university. The Office of Student Accessibility ensures students with disabilities have equal access to their academic experiences at UTD by determining eligibility, approving reasonable accommodation. We also engage in outreach across campus in order to make campus a more inclusive, accessible, and welcoming environment for people with disability. Tonight, I have the honor of being with you introducing our guest speaker, Carl Van Delft from the Netherlands. Van Delft is known to many chess players across the world for his longstanding passion for chess science and for his remarkable networking skills. Few chess players can match his social capital in the world of chess development. He was introduced to chess at the age of 11 by reading a book, Uncle John Teaches His Nephew's Chess, written by Max Yu and Albert Van Loon. He was so intrigued, intrigued that he started participating in chess competition and discovered a whole new world. He holds a master's degree in psychology from the University of Amsterdam and has lectured and published widely about the benefits of chess in education. Before embarking on the career in researching in chess education, Van Delft was a journalist for 15 years with regional newspapers in the Netherlands. During that time, he became active as a volunteer trainer and organizer in the chess world. He is truly outstanding in his field and has a great understanding and a remarkable vision of the future for children and adults with disabilities, learning and succeeding in chess. Chess is a suitable sport for children or, and, or adults on the autism spectrum, as it stimulates social, emotional, and cognitive development. It is a game that is truly inclusive, no boundaries to race, gender, age, or disability. One of Van Delft's quote, through chess, children can become empowered, gaining insight on themselves and their environment. Van Delft offers a wealth of practical advice on how to launch and present a chess program and how to apply the most effective didactic for children to build critical life skills through learning chess. Without further ado, please join me in welcoming Carl Van Delft, who is going to give us an enlightening presentation on chess and special needs. Welcome. I guess it's my turn. Uh... Thank you, uh, Ke Kelly, for the nice introduction. Thank you also, uh, James uh, and Tim, for um, inviting me. It's really an uh, honor to, uh, to be... Uh, yeah. I uh, start with my lecture, and now I have to check my... Yeah, I think almost ready. You see the screen, Chess and Special Needs. There, okay. And I still have to, yes, there. 
She has a uh, special needs. That's um, what I'm talking about tonight. Um, okay, to introduce, uh, okay, I'm a chess teacher, a journalist and a psychologist. Apple in the Netherlands. Um, I do two things. Um, I run a chess academy in Apeldoorn, and I'm uh, also part-time uh, science project manager for the learning platform uh, Chessable. Okay, the storyline of um, my lecture. Start with uh, talent development. I'm talking about the local chess culture, didactics, chess and life skills, and then we come to special needs. So there's kind of logic in this. It was years ago, when I was 11 years old, never heard about chess. I went to the library and found this book. Uncle John teaches his nephew chess. Okay, it was interesting. I found some uh, other boys we played, but then no supportive environment. So I, uh, I quit. This is lesson one. It's very difficult to do things uh, at yourself. The right, you see, um, let's see if the, yeah, this works. This is probably me, but the more important is my son, Marijn. When he uh, was 11, uh, he got involved in, uh, in school chess. And uh, he played in team and he was very enthusiastic. At that time, I studied psychology in the evening at the University of Amsterdam. And I decided to specialize in um, chess psychology. So uh, did some research about the benefits of, um, of chess education in schools. Um, uh, also some literature research about social determinants of talent um, development. For example, I used biographies of uh, Paul Gard and Weizkin. And okay, that and I did some um, research about mental training and training systems. Okay, then we, uh, so Marijn and I went on an adventure. It wasn't uh, to be uh, become a champion or something. No, I told him when you are one of the 50 best in your age categories, then it makes sense to visit other towns and go to tournaments. Okay, but uh, and then uh, we asked around about training methods, but it was not that much about psychology and, uh, and youth uh, training. So we uh, we found our way, and five years later, Marijn was an uh, was Dutch champion under 16, and, uh, and a few years later uh, he, he became an international master. Okay, so we uh, we thought uh, we won't do it uh, alone. Uh, we invited a lot of boys and girls at my home, just um, make fun. And I think uh, what I learned from social psychology is you can stimulate others to stimulate each other. And this worked. Um, we invited all kinds of people. You will see here um, Mark Dvoretsky. He visited our um, home, I think, five, six times. This uh, little boy is now almost a grandmaster. He's in FM. This is, um, he had an interland uh, uh, between, uh, you see Afroeg and other guys, the Netherlands, Germany. You see Yusuf of there somewhere, the Vretsky, Uwens, Afek. Okay, training of Yusuf of. This is my son commenting uh, in the youth event. Uh, Manuel Bosman give a lecture. So that. All kinds of things we organized. When you organize, what is very important is communication. So you see a few uh, examples. Uh, I made a poster of them for the London Chess Conference. Um, weekly via email, uh, we sent um, a newsletter. And you talk to people, you listen to people. Uh, organizing discussions, uh, how we can learn from each other. So a lot of social psychology we, um, we used to develop a local chess culture. And there's uh, 
there we had this book, first in Dutch, then in English, and uh, on the picture, um, well, it's about coaching, training, organization, communication. This year, uh, our friend Arthur Yusupov, who played uh, for 20 years in the Appleton team. This is a local boy. He became a grandmaster. He became EM. He became uh, EM. Then, after 15 years of being a journalist, I, um, I became a chess teacher. On the picture, you see me. Um, with kids, uh, highly uh, gifted uh, kids, education. I did a lot of things more, and uh, this resulted first in a Dutch book, then Albert Hoogland of um, New and Chess. He um, read the Dutch book and uh, invited me um, for an English uh, publication. And the book uh, is about um, four things, didactics. At the end, I give more than 300 uh, psychological insights, uh, training methods. It varies from uh, baby studies to, uh, to um, game-based learning. Um, so it's, uh, it's about science, methods of uh, research. For example, I interviewed uh, Gobet and others and Sala. Um, it's also about the results of uh, research. And then maybe eight or ten, yeah, a lot of chapters about special need groups. And I come back on this um, in a mo moment. You may find more information when you um, visit uh, the English, uh, my English site, chesttalent.com. There also you see information about recommended about London chess conferences. This is a book my son wrote. Uh, okay. I think uh, chess is a metaphor for life. Well, I'm not the first who says this, but um, I think, uh, well, for uh, domains, uh, cognitive, analyze, Creativity, emotional, uh, deal with losses and challenges, or social, cooperate, communicate, and the metacognitive means self reflection, self management. You can integrate uh, learning skills and competences in your uh, training, and that's where, where my book is uh, about. We're talking about education. It's about uh, the right combinations. <laughs> There's the student with his uh, needs, potential characteristics. There's the mediator, the teacher, the, the circumstances, social, practical, which uh, learning and teaching methods you use which chess content and methods, and then which life skills you want to, um, to approach, to teach. Uh, this is a kind of puzzle all, all the time. But like, uh, you don't do it alone. I always say uh, the kids are the co-author of their own upbringing. And this is um, a quote by Laszlo Polga. I think it's very true. Um, you just give the kids an active role. <laughs> you don't have to uh, think about it yourself, all this information. Uh, there is a lot of good information out there about mediation. For example, you can on, um, on YouTube, you can find um, uh, videos uh, of uh, Professor uh, Feuerstein about mediation. And uh, about the mindset, there's this book. Uh, of Barry, Professor Barry Heimer. I work with him in the Chessable uh, Science Team. And it's, this is uh, Grandmaster Peter Wells. Um, he is a uh, coach of the English team. And um, 
I know him also personally. By uh, even this picture is taken in my living room where we played uh, some tournament. But uh, that's good information. There is of course uh, more. When you go to my English site, you will find uh, a lot of resources. Uh, I think 17 pages of um, of links to all kinds of information. Um, learning is about uh, transfer. You learn um, something at school to calculate, and then later in the in, in the shop, you you know how how much to pay for uh, for things. So it's, learning is always about transfer, but um, sometimes it's going automatically. For example, when you um, when you play chess and you are concentrated and you develop your concentration, this you can use in other parts of your life or on a school study. Sometimes it's not that obvious, uh, but via comparison, via mediator, um, you can uh, transfer uh, some uh, some skills and competences. I'll give a few examples in a, in a moment. Just a remark that um, you always have to connect to the frame of reference. You don't tell a three-year-old kid um, some abstract opening theory, uh, but you can give them a, a, a mini game, a queen with uh, four pawns, against four pawns, for example. Not those, the information, not too much. Clear language. And always, after a training, always ask them, what did we learn? By the way, before we begin, I ask them, uh, do you have questions? Always important to involve them. And at the end, just uh, always try to formulate a kind of rule of thumb or some insight they can take, uh, take away. Well, the comparison. You see kids, you see chairs. It was years ago that an 11 year old boy or 12 year old, he visited me uh, weekly and I had given him some uh, homework, some tech, 12 tactics puzzles. And we, we checked the answers. First eight were correct, four, the last four not. And he told me, well, uh, they were more, more difficult. I said, no. I said, take this chair, put it above your head. Is it heavy? No, no, no. Okay, stand another five minutes. Well, then it became heavy. Okay, he said, well, what's this about? I said, okay, we continue training, and then um, after uh, 50 minutes, take again this chair. Again, it was uh, light in the beginning. I, he said, well, what's this? I said, well, it's, it's called energy management. Uh, your brain and your body need some rest, and you um, and this is your um, this is your lesson. And you, you have to use this also in a game of chess. Sometimes you just walk around a bit over training, have a cut a short break. <laughs> also, um, when I see kids blundering during lessons, blundering pieces, I ask them. Um, what do you do when you cross the street? Well, you we look to the left, to the right. Okay, why not in chess? Always first is a life lesson. Always first look for danger. And then think about your own brilliant uh, ideas. You have to make uh, choices on the board in your life. This is a nice example by uh, Fernando Moreno. And, uh, uh, originally Spanish um, American psychologist, work with um, with uh, with children with um, social problems. And you see why to move. And uh, now, and when the pawn comes to the other, it becomes a queen, and you can mate after a few moves. This king. And uh, Moreno says, "Well, you do walk on the street." Some guy he, uh, comes to you, want to fight. Do you fight? Well, maybe it's clever not to fight. 
And then, so the best uh, solution here is move the pawn forward. A little bit of humor. And you also can ask kids to uh, to develop themselves um, in duos, for example, come up with nice um, positions. We give you a moment to find a solution. The solution is it's a bit unexpected. There's this rule of castling, you see? It's the only move that two pieces uh, move at the same time. And in this case, the king goes uh, two spares to the right. And, and this rook gives check. And the, the king cannot escape, would be checkmate. Sometimes, you can solve one problem with another. Things seem hopeless, but there is maybe a solution. And I give them, um, as kind of heuristic, I give them an acronym. I say, um, you have, uh, when you are checked, you have um, three possibilities. You can capture, uh, put between, and go away. Well, then they can remember. Um, and in this case, Maybe um, you find a solution. You see, this is a problem. Knight is attacked. And the king is attacked. Well, the solution is to put the knight before the king. And the knight is safe, and the king is not. There's no uh, check. Okay, um, I use three um, basic, um, maybe it's English word is pillars, but um, three principles. It's uh, when I, I uh, give trainings, it's um, a variation, it's fascination, so variation, a lot of different things. Fascination to stimulate the intrinsic motivation, <laughs> and participation. The, um, the kids should be very uh, active involved. Well, here I'm uh, with my grandson. I'll show you something in the room. My grandson, we play uh, head and brains uh, with, uh, against my son and the granddaughter. So he says night, she has to decide which night and where. This is with art. I did it. Um, often in highly gifted schools where I teach 10 years. Um, so take a, a chess position or a chess topic or uh, something with chess, and then uh, you can make a, uh, combine it with, um, um, with something of art. We call it a chess expression. So then ki uh, kids get involved. They, they can make a movie. Uh, they can make... Um, um, a choreography, they can make uh, music, they can uh, name it. Tournaments are uh, important. All these kids I'm, uh, I'm teaching at, at local schools. Okay, here I'm playing another granddaughter and I help her a bit by finding all the time the, the best move. And then uh, end up with checkmate. This is our Wednesday school. Uh, Boys are analyzing a game, discussing. It's very good. Uh, uh, um, they learn to communicate. This is in the park near my house. We have a table, a chess table there. So people meet. We come to the special needs groups. Several uh, categories, highly gifted, blind, deaf, autism, dyslexia, social therapeutic. So for example, um, depressed kids. Um, this drawing is made uh, by the mother of um, a boy with autism. He was very anxious and then via the chess uh, was very helpful uh, to, um, to teach, um, uh, to, yeah, to learn, to get the context with other people, etc. And by the way, um, he ended up with a rating of 2-2, uh, playing uh, sometimes in the first team of Apeldoorn, which is playing in the highest league of the Netherlands. 
their second actually at the moment. By the way, uh, we have uh, in the local team of 10 players, we have 80% uh, percent, uh, local players um, as a result of years of chess culture. culture. Um, but the boy, um, the son of this mother, he now uh, finished also uh, two academic um, courses, economics and psychology, and he's uh, doing a PhD. Um, very often, life is about self-fulfilling prophecies. When you think the boy cannot, uh, is anxious and he cannot do anything, well, then this comes uh, self-fulfilling prophecy. If you stimulate him, a lot, of, a lot is possible. I was asked by the National Federation to write about chess and autism. And, um, okay, so I uh, start talking with all kinds of people, for example, um, International Master Alex Wolf from Australia, the national champion, other people worldwide. And I wrote, um, wrote an article. It was later, um, I developed a site, and there you can find also um, some, um, uh, in other languages, some um, texts. You can click um, on a logo, and then you will see another course and, and a movie as well. There are a video about this Casper Hermeling. He read the article, he came to me, he said, I read your article, can I help you in a way? Because I uh, have autism and I even became a chess teacher. Okay. I said, uh, I have always a camera with me, sit down and we make a uh, interview. And then he told me it's difficult to understand other people. But via psychoeducation, uh, he, were, he, were, he learned to, to see other, uh, like uh, via theory uh, of mind, and, uh, he learned to see other perspectives. He got involved in the chess world, which brought him a lot of uh, pleasure and social contacts. Well, understanding that that's the problem uh, uh, with uh, with kids uh, with autism. They have problems understanding the world because a lot of uh, stimuli. Um, the brains are a bit other, uh, a bit. Uh, other uh, than other people uh, wired, let's say. Um, okay, so and the people don't uh, think their behavior is a bit weird, so all kinds of communication problems. Well, results, fear, frustrations. This is a, a tournament for kids with autism. And um, years ago, and uh, the boy at the right was 15 at the time, and at the moment, 12 years later, we still uh, have monthly trainings. And I asked him after, um, during the first year, after some months, what, what did you learn? Well, then um, he told me some things. Uh, I, I accept losing. Uh, of course, I'm now a better chess player, so I can beat my granddad. Uh, also, um, I can concentrate now uh, better. And now I can talk about it because this is what we uh, we did all the time together. I asked him questions and then it was short answers. And then at the end, we ended up with uh, all kinds of dialogues. And then very important, I was a bit surprised. Yeah, I was not, uh, I should have known, but he said, I can trust you because if you have um, such a uh, handicap uh, and there is a lot of confusion, you don't know what to expect of people um, in many uh, situations. So I think it comes down, um, all coaching, I think two uh, important things uh, is be very clear and um, be empathic. Sometimes you have some, um, this boy later also became, uh, an, uh, as an adult, um, young adult, became a teacher himself. His, mo his mother um, his mother still um, 
reads our newsletter. They come from another town. But uh, you see something in his ears, something with uh, his hands, because he's sometimes a bit stressed. Some experiences that uh, go to the, the boy at the left. His mother told me everything should be planned because, uh, and, but not for chess. There he feels so at ease that he uh, likes to investigate, to talk with people. Okay, so there are more um, experiences. This is typical also for um, kids with autism. If you share their interest, then they are open for contact. Um, okay. So more in general, what is autism? It's a neurological disorder. You have um, trouble internalizing uh, sensory stimuli as, uh, as a whole. Uh, as a girl said, I'm very busy in my head. Before it was said that 1% of the research showed 1% of the population <coughs> has a form of autism. And the, but five times more male than women. But there is a question mark. Because uh, probably a lot of girls, they learned uh, gender stereotypes and they learned how to um, keep quiet and to uh, adapt to the social circumstances. So probably there are more uh, percentages higher. Well, we already said that uh, the kids uh, seek a refuge in uh, fixed habits. But now, uh, also, no autistic kid is the same because there's nature nurture, of course. Uh, how uh, were you educated? Um, but are you introvert? Are you a bit, um, are you more or less intelligent, etc.? Structure environment uh, is helpful. So, some problems again. Mm. Processing information because of the stimuli overload, process information slow. Uh, and then the social skills um, can deteriorate. They can have strong emotions, also physical uh, limitations, and also strong uh, qualities. A lot are, uh, I have eye uh, for details, I think very concrete and um, Systematically, memory strong, very rational and uh, reliable. So, what you can do is give them a safe environment with structure. No abstract talking, um, um, very concrete in your com uh, communication and empathy. Show. Uh, you listen to them, give them time to um, to think about things. Why chess uh, is suitable for kids with autism? Well, it's individual. In a football team, there is a lot of uh, things happening at the same time. They can often not oversee it. Uh, it's not uh, physical. Uh, clear rules. Non-linguistic, so no ambiguous uh, languages. Language, you can do it in your own tempo and the structured environment. Again, uh, the woman with uh, the first drawing. In this, uh, she she says she says that when my son plays chess. And she has kind of metaphor of a uh, post box. She had a self confidence, uh, social context, pleasure. A lot of things come uh, come together with chess. Again, uh, the social context, the cognitive um, challenge, success experiences, and very important also, um, you be. Uh, 
can become a member of a group, your identity. Having a clear identity is very important uh, for people, for everybody. Of course, the good news is you don't have to be a very good chess player. Just um, know a bit about um, this kind of information and uh, practice. And you can be very helpful for kids with special, uh, special needs. Start by looking at the world via the eyes of a kid with autism. Empathic, well, you have to um, use uh, didactic uh, skills. Be aware that sometimes or often confusion can arise and then uh, explain the situation. And also very important, we talked before about uh, make a kid the co-author of his own development. Give the kid responsibilities. Then the uh, kid feels proud, uh, develops skills and competences. So then, chess in the... Um, we we're talking about emancipation, empowerment. To get grip on yourself in your environment, and um, I think uh, a good approach is to say we make the best of it together and no shame. You're blind, you're blind. You have autism, you have autism. Uh, be open uh, about uh, things as a start for uh, communication with other people. <laughs> for kids with autism, uh, you can think about behavior therapy. Uh, learning them how to behave in all kinds of situations, giving them uh, psychoeducation, so give them insight in all kinds of social processes. Medicines can sometimes be useful. You can arrange the, um, the circumstances. And as we, as I hope to um, let you see, um, you can uh, the role of chess. And with. Uh, a mini game and an experience. This game is called Return the Pieces. Uh, well, you see, they are not on the right squares. The idea is uh, you should, by, uh, by turn, um, you stay at your own side of the board. And then, for example, I play, and when I, uh, I should be um, economically, as fast as possible to, to bring them in the, the, the right beginning position. So not here, there, 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 and there. No, one, two, and one, two. And maybe I move these pieces and then the, the queen can go in one move to the, the square D1. One restriction. Uh, if I place, for example, a knight, uh, black is not allowed. Otherwise, it, uh, you would mirror uh, what you do. Okay, so I do this with kids. Also with this kid at my Wednesday school. <laughs> and um, she refused. She has autism. Well, she said, I refuse. You see, I take the other queen. I say, no, you cannot take it. There is a, no, no, you, I see I can take it. What to do? So I think uh, I need a cunning plan. And then I thought, I have some uh, pawns left. So I put them. I made a wall of pawns. And then she said, yes, now we can play. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Maybe there are questions, remarks. And before I forget, uh, I think this uh, lecture will be published. And then uh, if, uh, if you have questions, 
you, uh, you always can email me via this email uh, address. A welcome uh, email because always I, uh, I can learn from questions also. Okay, thank you very much. I guess I should uh, stop sharing now. Huh? Is this correct? Correct. Correct, I stop sharing. All right, and now Tim Steiner, our program coordinator, will uh, give you some questions to answer from our audience. All right. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, first question. Uh, what do you think the true ratio is of autistic boys to autistic girls? And does that differ from the five to one ratio on your slide? I don't know exactly, but for sure it's more. Uh, yeah, no. I don't know what, what is the most recent literature, uh, but, but I know also in the Netherlands there, is, uh, there are some centers and they regularly do some investigations, but there are now, uh, but for me, it doesn't matter that much. It's more the, the, aware, the awareness that, uh, that kids can, uh, girls can also uh, suffer uh, from autism. So you should always try to be aware of what's happening in the world around you. All right. Next question. How old should a child be to begin competing in rated chess tournaments? My friend uh, Arthur Yusupov says about talent, uh, you see it in their eyes when they are smiling and, and they are uh, thinking, uh, then it's the right moment. I like that. Um, uh, one of the audience members um, on your slide, I think you uh, had some information about some studies. If they click into that, is there, they can access, uh, someone was asking if there are books that you could recommend that highlights the benefits of learning and playing chess with individuals on the autism spectrum? Well, my book, um, Chess for Educators, is about this kind of things. And there's a lot of practical information uh, uh, and also scientific insights. But um, when you go to this uh, chesstalent.com, uh, site. Uh, there you'll find um, also um, in the book are maybe uh, is one page of uh, of sources, but uh, on my site you will find uh, 17, 17 pages with links. So, uh, so all for free. You can find your way there. Great, great. Um... One of the audience wants to know, what do you enjoy about teaching kids? Well, I'm very fascinated by um, the talent development. Yeah, and there's so much possible. Uh, well, you know, <laughs> I, uh, the school system and I were a mismatch. So I later had to do some extra things to get to university. And I felt like in prison. It was top down. And, and now I think, uh, and now I'm the guy uh, who is responsible for them. Uh, <laughs> the roles are reversed. So uh, I, I like to, to work together. And uh, kids are uh, very spontaneous. But by the way, I don't only work with, uh, with kids. I also like to do uh, scientific research. Uh, I work also with uh, with elderly. This is this, um, working with kids is just uh, one of the um, one of the activities. Okay. Next question: Do you know of uh, a certain individual who had autism that became quite good with chess? Yeah. What 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 level did they achieve? I think there are, um, well, I think one of the champions um, of Australia with whom I a uh, few times had correspondence uh, and who bought one of my books, he, uh, his grandmaster, 
and champion of um, Australia. One of the champions. Yeah, I don't. Um, you can fill in yourself, but uh, I, there are more, I think. But it's a bit uh, tricky uh, to put a stamp on people. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right. But uh, uh, there is a lot, of, uh, a lot is possible. Sure. Even you see also at the university, uh, now for example, uh, in Eindhoven, that's uh, uh, city. Uh, it's the basis of the Philips company uh, with the lamps and uh, all kind of uh, machines. And there, there was done some research that um, there are more engineers there uh, with autism compared to other um, cities in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, but you can with autism, uh, you have limitations. But uh, like I said, I showed on one of the slides, you have also possibilities, and it's about finding your way. And, and if you uh, coaching kids is help them to find their way. That's um, how I think. Uh, I have a question of my own. I own your blue book. And I was just curious how long it took you to write that because it's very dense. Uh, you mean uh, developing chess talent? That's right. I wrote it with my son. Eh? And um, yeah, well, uh, it, it was with, with faces in between, but when we, uh, we uh, took us three years, and I uh, recently made a small joke, um, it's the same uh, amount of time Bronstein needed for Zurich uh, 53. So, so yeah, I, you, but sometimes it's good to take um, to take your time to write a book and to show text to other people and ask them for their uh, opinions. I have a question here. Uh, what is your favorite chess game collection book, if you have one? Well, then. Um, yeah, my, my friend, uh, Jochen Afek. I know him since uh, 25 years. And we met in Poland during a European Youth um, Championship. He was with Israel and um, Youth, and I was um, with the, uh, one of the people with the Dutch delegation. My son played then at the European Championship. And um, yeah, Jochen uh, later came to Amsterdam and he wrote. Um, a very nice uh, book about his finer studies and, and games. Unfortunately, I forgot the title. I'm very bad at <laughs> book titles. But uh, this is, uh, I think, um, yeah, but there is uh, much more, of course, um, out there. Sure. sure. Uh, I have, uh, I think, maybe my last question here. Oh, by the way, I forgot my son, yeah. Let's make some uh, promotion. My son uh, wrote this book um, uh, about uh, positional, uh, mastering positional sacrifices. I can also recommend. If I get the podium, I take it. Okay. Okay. Um, I think some people wanted to know what was the highest rating that you ever achieved and what is your title, if you have one? I have only a title from university. And I, uh, the rating was about 18, uh, 1800 something. Oh. Hello. Okay. Which is good news because if I can do it, a lot of people can do it. Sure. All right, Jim, I'm out of questions. I'm going to pass All right. the. Thank floor you back very to you. much, Kara. And uh, now we go to the award presentation. Uh, Carrie Tate will present the award to Carol. Is the Chess Educator of the Year. I'd like to present this to you, Carl Vandell. This is the uh, award that UT Dallas would like to hand off to you for the year of 2022. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, you okay there you go. Excellent. <laughs> I feel uh, honored. Yeah. And uh, I don't want to uh, say that much, but 
what I want to say is that um, what I really appreciate that via this event you give um, uh, a podium, you give um, uh, more um, attention to the possibilities Jess offers um, for kids with special needs to uh, for their uh, empowerment, for their uh, development. And I'm very happy that I uh, that you give me this uh, opportunity to give this uh, this lecture. Well, we really appreciate having you as our honoree this year, Carol. And uh, we thank everybody for coming out tonight to the presentation. And just a quick reminder, when we finish the presentation, there will be a short survey at the end. It won't take very long at all to fill it out. And with that, we conclude tonight's presentation. Thank you very much. <laughs>